Hello, this is SGX Sector Connect. There are many opportunities to invest on the Singapore market, and we're going to be looking at two of them today with Jeff Howie, Chief Market Strategist from the Singapore Exchange. Hi there, Jeff. So let's look at the oil and gas sector against the telecommunications sector. Let's talk about oil and gas first. What are the investment opportunities on the market there? Well, the oil and gas industry, Mark, is really supported by three sectors. The first sector is perhaps one of the most well known, and that is the oil and gas exploration and production sector. The two biggest stocks of this sector on uh, SGX are, uh, are actually RH Petrogas and Interra Resources, the latter of which was added to SGX main board earlier in the year. The second core pillar, I guess, of the oil and gas industry is the oil, oil field services sector. And this, this, this sector is actually providing support services to these oil and gas explorers and producers. These, I guess, the largest two companies that might be more well known to investors are Ezion Holdings and Ezra Holdings. And then the third core component, of course, are the oil rig builders and the ship builders. Uh, the largest two stocks that we have listed on SGX for this core sector are Keppel Corp and Semcorp Marine and which are also uh, effectively the world's largest oil rig builders in the world by volume. So when we talk about the exploration and production companies, uh, by definition, they're not the oil majors that are already producing a lot of oil and gas. So actually, what is it that uh, investors are getting into? What business are they getting, uh, investing in if they invest in these exploration and production companies? Well, as you can see uh, from, from the list, we actually have four oil and gas, well, four companies listed on the main board that are exploring or producing oil and gas. And, and these four companies are all looking at uh, interests in the region. Uh, as, as you can see, RH Petrogas is the largest by market cap, followed by Ontario Resources. And then there's Merak Energy and Ramba Energy in there as well. What the ultimate goal of these oil explorers and producers is to do is to basically make a commercial discovery. And with that commercial discovery, the uh, the oil explorer is basically turning a prospective resource into a contingent resource which then effectively on development can become reserves. Okay, but how does the oil and gas industry that's accessible through the Singapore Exchange compare to the telecommunications industry which a lot of investors would already be familiar with? Okay, the oil and gas industry and telecommunications industry in terms of their relative performance to each other can obviously be, be shown in this chart which shows previous past performances of these uh, two sectors. And we have also have the STI, the Straits Times Index, represented in this chart as well. And as you can see, over the last, over the last year, over the last three years, there have been some different performances. In the last one year, you can see the STI has returned approximately 13%, including dividend distributions, versus the oil and gas index, which has returned 6%. And then there's telecommunications as well, which including dividends has outperformed the two, uh, returning 20%. And as you can see, uh, taking the, taking the uh, three year perspective, the telecommunications index has also outperformed, again, that outperformance is 53% versus the oil and gas index, which has returned 40%. And here we have the Straits Times index over the last three years returning 21%. Now what's interesting is that you can see how the oil and gas index is more volatile than the telecommunications index. You can see that difference between the one year performance and the three year performance is greatest for the oil and gas index. And that can also be explained by volatility when you consider that uh, the volatility over the last three years on an annualised basis of the FTSE ST oil and gas index is around the 25% mark mm -hmm. versus 14% for telecommunications and 15% for the Straits Times Index. So that would suggest that if you're looking for total returns, there's a sector for you. But if you're looking, maybe you're more active in the market, maybe you're a trader and you go in and out uh, much more frequently, then you'd be looking at a different sector. Is that a fair assessment? Well, I think, I think, I think the assessment uh, is true for any investor. I think for any investor who wants to invest more into the stock market, must obviously do it in the safest way possible and look at exploring safe methods for investing. One of which, of course, is diversifying over the many sectors that we have listed on the, uh, on the stock exchange. And as we, as we explained with the oil and gas sector, there are a number of sub-sectors in, in that oil and gas sector that actually do have different types of businesses.
So, so Jeff, looking at those charts so far, actually a lot of it seems to speak in favour of the telecommunications sector. So what's the case for you know, investing in the oil and gas industry sector? Well, as you can see from that chart, that there's obviously a higher degree of cyclicality in the oil and gas index uh, versus the uh, Straits Times index with that difference between the one year and the three year performance. However, there is a, uh, a fact that uh, investors should know when they're looking at these indices. These indices don't necessarily include all the stocks of the sector. For instance, uh, when you're looking at the oil and gas sectors that we discussed, there's actually four main board stocks that make up the oil and gas explorers and producers. There's 13 stocks that make up the actual oil rig and shipbuilders. And then there's 17 stocks that make up the uh, oil field services. So that's a universe of 34 stocks that provide core pillar uh, upstream oil and gas business. Mm -hmm. Then you have only 15 stocks actually included in the oil and gas index. Because FTSE does the liquidity testing and the free float weighting. Well, yeah, you have the, for, for a stock to be included in the oil and gas index, it must also be a component of the FTSE ST All Share Index, which basically is a good uh, 183 stocks or so that are basically made up of the stocks of the Straits Times Index, the FTSE ST Mid Cap Index, and the FTSE ST Small Cap Index. Okay, so so far you've painted a fairly rosy picture of the telecommunications industry. What, what are the other things that might make a difference in terms of oil and gas and why investors should consider that sector? Sure, well they're very two different sectors. As we said, uh, oil and gas is a lot more cyclical potentially and also uh, geographical revenue streams are a lot more diversified, whether it's uh, across the world or across the region. And there's also an asymmetric price point as well. If, you, if there's going to be a lot more diversity and differences between, uh, between the uh, companies that are listed and representing the sector. As you can see in this chart, uh, over the past 12 months, you've had uh, of those four oil and exploration stocks, quite a degree of differences in terms of performance. We have uh, Merak Energy, which has uh, generated a 252% gain over the past 12 months. Wow. And there's RH Petrogas, which has generated a 14 to 15% gain over the past 12 months. Right, okay. So Presumably that's not an indication of what will always happen. Oh, absolutely not, of course not. This is obviously just past performances and uh, has absolutely no bearing on what might happen in the future. Okay, but I guess the point is that each of these sectors serves very different roles in people's portfolios. Yes, absolutely. Uh, in terms of investors who wish to diversify over as, uh, as many sectors as they're comfortable with and uh, basically build a portfolio that doesn't have too much concentration risk in one particular stock or sector. So as you can see, there's, there's a number of sectors and a number of subsectors within those sectors to offer investors uh, a choice in terms of finding the right type of stocks, the right type of trust, the right type of securities that they, might, that they will feel most comfortable with and whichever might suit their risk profile. Thank you very much, Jeff Howie from the Singapore Exchange.